Welcome back, everybody. I've been feeling really disheartened about my own training and my own lack of gains. So what I decided to do was fly in two of the absolute best hypertrophy experts to teach me a thing or two about how to build muscle. So over to you guys, what are we doing? We are going to touch Eugene's body uh, in a sense. And from behind too, there are many, many euphemisms to make. We're gonna train his back, which means we are gonna warm up with pull downs. We're gonna start with pull ups. We're gonna go into a lat prayer of some kind because you gotta do what you can in the physical world to get your gains, but you gotta pray for them shits too. And then lastly, we will do probably Smith machine deficit flexion rows. This will thicken you up. So that instead of looking like Harry Potter, you look like Somebody muscular. Anyway, let's do it. Thicker than a snicker. Beauty. This is called working out. Yeah. It's good for your health and it'll build you that kind of physique that'll get the ladies turning their heads. Fuck. Everyone knows there are two things that turn girls on. One is 50 shades of gray. The other one is a wide back built by pull-ups, warmed up to by pull-downs. Jared, are these facts? They're definitely facts. You want to do another set of pull-downs? I'm down for it. You've, you've convinced me. Just one more is good. Boy, some good old calves. And right. The next thing we'll do is a set of two on pull-ups. And then after that, we'll be into the work set. The only reason Mark really agreed to come down all this way to train with me is because I have a passing resemblance to his wife. Oh, these are so sexual. In a good way. It's like a Melbourne skyline, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact for you guys, Mike loves the Melbourne city skyline more than he may love his wife. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> my love for my wife is a kind of like a quantum effect. Like it's on average very high, but stochastically goes like then to like plan her death mode. And then also stochastically jumps to like a religious experience level of love. You know, my baby's my, my girl, but I'm saying it's not really a religion every day. You know what I'm saying? It's more like the same shit 24 7. Do the dishes, wash the floor, or some shit out there. My butlers do all that. But you know what I'm saying, fellas? Is if you get married, you just make sure it's the right person. That's all I'm trying to say is sink shit through a lot. I guess you've got to do a work set now, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> no pausing at the top. All right. Just so right. switch directions, but then slow the eccentric. All right. If your chin doesn't clear, we stop counting and it's failure, but try to get as many to your chest as you can. Once you can't, no big deal, go to the chin. Even reach if you have to. All right. Your back is gonna triple in size. Just label this short Chinese weightlifter does pull-ups on YouTube and you're famous. <laughs> get that chin there, yes. One more, yeah, one more good on. one, big hold stretch. Hold the stretch, hold the stretch. Big there launch. Up, come on. Yes, and then slow, control, control, and rack. I would say that your set had all of the qualities of what we would consider a good set. And there are really only kind of two. Was your technique externally good to us? And were you trying? It's really not that complicated. Right. But so many people fuck both of those things up. And some people just get one, some people get the other. So you get this effect where someone's like, yeah, man, fucking Dorian Yates. And they do this weird half rep bullshit. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You trying to avoid work? You know, we got the evidence-based Harry Potter fucking nerd that does like loaded par length and partials or some shit, which is dope. But like he's obsessing about details. And meanwhile, like his RIR is like eight or some shit on every set. But in any case, yeah, amazing technique never broke down and you were fucking trying. That's, that's all I want. You ready for another set? Fuck, okay. Yeah. It's mostly one of those <laughs> questions you ask when you know the answer has to be yes. Gorgeous. Big stretch. Yes. No pausing up there. Get to the height, come down. There yes. you go. Perfect. That was the perfect rep, Eugene. Control, 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 control. Weight, rack. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. oh your cheeks. So why don't you pause at the top? It's not as important as the eccentric loading is. So yeah. when you're holding that deep stretch, you're getting a shitload of muscle growth. Yeah. When you get to the top and you're kind of holding a peak uh, concentric contraction. Well, it's so isometric at some point. Yeah. It's not really, it's not, the literature isn't really pointing that it does too much more right. for growth than like something like a really controlled eccentric, holding yeah. a deep stretch eccentric. It will make the eccentric harder and you'll build a lot of metabolites and stuff. Yeah. So it's a cool little intensity technique you might be able to throw in here and there. 
like sometimes my curls I'll come up and I'll squeeze really hard and then I'll go down slow and it limits the load which is super cool mm. so people can do both it's hell yeah but on a pull-up especially like mm. there's a better argument for it's a bad use of your fatigue exactly. to That's work exactly. so hard on a non yeah. so hypertrophic part of the movement mm -hmm. uh, we take a more neutral approach where it's like it's fine but it definitely can't say that it's like you should be pausing at the top because that borders on more wrong than right advice yeah. so we just say it's definitely a factor you can do it every now and again just for variation it's really cool and to build certain elements of control from the top position but other than that the default should be like touch and go oh, that's man. three right that's three one more set another song real legitimate pull-ups with that good of technique are very hard to do we've been around a few folks that claim and accurately have very high pull-up records but it's with uh, pull-ups there's nothing wrong with that a little up and down pump action i've done a little pump action myself and i got the swedish pump machine 5000 what the fuck is the point of a penis pump? Jared, you use one. Public. I've never used a penis pump. I'm thirsty. Let's get this done. Boom. There you go. Boom. Eugene, you're a fucking freak. Okay, slow, 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 slow. Big stretch. Rack. Gorgeous. Ah. Lat prayers? Lat prayers it is. Sure. All right. Let's do them. The narrower, the better, because it stretched lats a little bit more. Yeah. But you have to make sure your shoulders are comfy with it. Some people prefer a false grip. It helps a little bit with the pushing and connecting sometimes. And then so what we want you to do is basically walk your hips back, flatten down as much as you can to make sure your arms are overhead. Come closer to the machine so you get high forces there, even closer. Yep. And then go ahead and just come up a little bit with your chest and take the bar straight arm down to your hips. Yes, a couple more. As much from here as you can, high elbows. Go, 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 go. Chest now up a little bit. Just a tad. Yes. Right there, perfect. Hit it. Right here. Come on, come on. Chest up. Yes. <sighs> Amazing. Slow as if you're going to do another one. Big, big, big stretch. Big stretch, nice chest and down, slow. Big stretch, big stretch. Rack. Oh. Oh. I've done stiff arm pull downs a ton, but it would always be initiated from here. poking. Yep. That's most people. Yeah, which you know takes that leverage out of here, but having to stay here because you're in such a weak position. Exactly. You're less like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah, it's the most mechanically disadvantageous position. Yeah. It creates a shitload of internal force for the lats. Yeah. So then everything is lats. Instead of starting with the hips and doing, like I could do the whole stack like that. Totally. But if I were totally. to do it the way you're doing it, I might use like 100 pounds. No, that felt really good. You almost have like an internal rotation at the top there. Yeah, is that, so that a good thing? High elbows. No, that's what you want, yeah. yeah. You're initiating the high elbow here and you're stretching yeah. with the lats I reach there. Because most people also do this, they're like, and not only will they raise up first, but their elbows are also like this. I feel like that's... I've seen yeah, that this is one. what most people do. Yeah. Instead of starting here, high elbows, use the lats, 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 lats. Yeah. Lats. Yeah. yeah. You know what it reminds me of is, when well, you know, I used to compete, you do a front relax and you like open out your, um, mm -hmm. like you're riding a chopper. Yeah. Which is nice. I mean, I don't know if it's intention, but I feel like I'm really opening up and stretching. Yeah, man, you got to train like you pose, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Come on. Stop touching him, you fucking pervert. <laughs> go. Yes. At least one more. There you go. There you go. Yes, finish. Yes. And then as if you're going to do another control. Control. Total control. As if another. As if another. Chest down. Hell yeah. Rack. Oh. Good stuff. Ah. Oh. Katrina just said, you did your chest at time. You just became a man. All right. Smith machine. Flexion rows, these are awesome. You can put a couple plates below your Smith, get a super big range of motion, make sure to crank that Smith back so that it doesn't bust back into the setup for you during the rows. We're trying to keep our hips at the same position, but we're curling the spine and stretching the back and then arching the spine at the top, big chest. Yes, really arch that back. I want your chest super sky high at the top. Yes. You feel those spinal erectors going? Yeah. One last one, big touch. Oh yeah, you got another one after this. Let's go, Eugene. Big stretch. Yes. Oh. Round that back. Butt high, butt high, butt high. Oh. Good stuff. Fuck. Oh. Yeah. Feel that? Everywhere? Everywhere. 
every way. So this way, what we did was we really focused on lats in the first two exercises. And then this one focuses on pretty much everything else, but because your lats are so pre-cooked, they're also a limiting factor now for this one. And it's just, it just destroys every part of your back. Good technique, big rounding, big arching, and you're gonna get a big, thick mid back. Yeah, Huge it feels spinal a lot. Very central, not spine. For those of you freaking out about spinal flexion. It's also really awesome to get strong in flexion and through a huge range of motion. And if you can produce force at all those positions, you're gonna grow a lot of muscle. It requires a lot of muscular activation to achieve. You're gonna use all the little muscles everywhere on your back. And it's also going to make you a very competent mover of your body because there's not gonna be a place where you didn't encounter very high forces. Excellent transfer to most sports, things like that. Huh. Optimal biomechanists will say, that's creating unnecessary instability and fatigue. Then you're going to burn out and not use your back. And I was... Well, it's the back we're burning out. Exactly. Yeah, that's like, what well, we want. Who the fuck are you into? The goal is to create that. Um, well, that's because they're all trying to row for the lats when that's not what a row is designed yeah. for. It's designed for the whole back. Yeah. So, how did I do? How would you rank my performance? Am I TFR approved? Yeah. Absolutely TFR approved. 10 out of 10. Am I going to grow my back now? No. No. See you next time, guys. <laughs>